to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. Welcome, my friends, once again to a place where a tale will be traditionally told. A place where you can let all your worries and your strife vanish for just a few moments. Where you can sit and listen to a terrifying tale. For this is the season of ghost stories. And last week I told the tale of a Barbary ape. And this week we will once again return to Carew Castle with its foreboding towers and hear the tale of its most famous ghost. Even there it is said that in the undercroft a Celtic warrior lurches around in the dark, waiting to be discovered on the darkest of nights. But his tale is not for us tonight. His tale is for another day. So sit back, if you can. Close your eyes, if it's safe to do so. Let your mind be clear. And join me at the time between times. The time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin, so thin that for just a few moments we can reach into their realm and for a few moments they can reach into ours. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky, now is the time that people see the Tulwith Tag, and now is the time that the spirits of the other world are glimpsed out of the corner of our eyes. They mean us no harm, but they all have a tale to tell. So walk with me down the winding walkways of the woods. There is the old fire pit. The flames are spluttering and dying. But there is enough warmth to hold us here for a few moments. We look around the clearing and there are our friends, all gathered and smiling and happy. Far away we can hear the howl of wolves. Far away we can hear the howl of bears, but we know we are safe right here at the time between times. Sit back as I tell you the tale of Princess Nest of the Hailbath. Princess Nest was the most beautiful woman in all of Wales. Her hair was dark and pitch. Her eyes were as deep as the ocean, but she was a kindly soul. She was the daughter of Rhys Sap Tudir, living in Pembrokeshire, a beautiful part of a beautiful country. And there she dispensed wisdom and kindness to all who came to see her. But her father welcomed the local lords to feast and to dine, and all of them would marvel at the beauty of Princess Nest. But one day, travelling from afar, became the most important visitor of all, Henry I from London. He walked into Nest's father's hall and there he saw the beautiful princess sitting, the sunlight from a roof window glinting off her hair. He instantly fell in love and they began a small but brief courtship, one of which a child was born. Of course, Henry was married and Henry lived 200 miles away in order to avoid embarrassment and such things that a king used to do, he forced one of his constables, Gerald de Windsor, to marry Princess Nest. It was on a sunny day when the sun roasted the fields of Pembrokeshire that Gerald rode on a great black charger to the hall of Nest's father. His heart was dark, his mind was full of anger, for he already had a mistress, and he did not want to marry this girl he had never met. But as he approached the castle, he saw standing on the battlements the most beautiful maid anyone had ever seen. They talked, and the day turned to night, and both of them knew that they had met that person who was true in their hearts. And again they fell in love. They were married, and all the locals rejoiced. Gerald de Windsor and Princess Nest of the Hyrebath were married and they built a castle, a wooden hall, great wooden stakes in a circle around it, and they ruled with kindness. But 
being a lord, Gerald had to welcome other lords. And after six years of happy marriage, where the people around them grew and prospered under their rule, and three children had been born, there came a fateful stormy night, where the thunder roared in the sky, and the lightning lit it up like it was day. Local lords gathered, and among them was one of the Welsh lords, Owain of Kilgenin Castle an old cousin of Nest's, but they had never met. He came into the castle, took advantage of the feast, but his eyes would not leave Nest, and he stared at her and stared at her as the night went on. Finally at midnight, when the thunder roared outside and the rain fell down, like a shower, like a waterfall, all the lords left, and Nest and Gerald went back to their bed. As the world roared and raged outside, they slept a nice, peaceful sleep. But in the morning, they were awoken by the horn and the bell of warning. And Gerald rushed outside to hear the news that an army was approaching Carew Castle. He gathered his troops. Nest stood on the battlements as Owain had brought his soldiers to Carew in an act of betrayal. They surrounded the castle. They had cut down a huge log of which to batter down the gates. And a battle happened. The clash of blades could be heard across the ocean. The roar of the dying could be heard across the sea. And the battle carried on all day until at last Owain's warriors smashed their way through the gateway into Carew Castle. And Gerald's soldiers were put to flight. In the great hall, he grabbed the children, took hold of Nest and said, we must leave. Now we must use the secret passage that we built a long time ago. Come with me, come with me now. Nest refused to go, wishing to help her servant. Gerald took the children to the tunnel. Before he could return for Nest, Owain's soldiers had seized her and dragged her away. Gerald and the children were lucky and they managed to escape. But Nest was taken by Owain to kill Genning Castle and there kept in a dungeon cell. He treated her cruelly, only let her out for an hour a day. He kept her, hoping that one day she would agree to their marriage. But on another night, when winter had become spring and the light was starting to shine and flowers blossomed in the meadows, Owain slept in his hall, drunk and sleep with his men, did not see a hooded figure climbing over the wall. Gerald had come for Nest. He rushed from shadow to shadow. He crossed the courtyard, down the steps into the dungeon, knocked out the guard, opened the door with a key and rescued Nest. They rushed outside, but they were spotted climbing over the wall using a rope. Outside, Gerald had placed his horse. They quickly got on the horse and rode away from Kilgrenin as fast as the horse's legs could carry them. As they left, Gerald turned to Nest and said, I could not live without you, my dear. I could not leave you there to rot. No matter what happens, we must return and live our lives as we had hoped. For you are my love. As they rode away, Nest knew happiness for the first time in a long time, but it did not last. As before they had got far from the castle, an arrow shot through the night and struck Gerald in the back, and he toppled from the horse and landed on the ground, dead. Being chased by Owain's guards and warriors, Nest rode away into the night back to Carew as she rebuilt the castle. Soldiers from miles around flocked to be at her side and protect her from Owain. And she lived out the rest of her life, giving kindness to those around her, being brave, being true, but being broken-hearted. Carew Castle, now a stone structure, like a broken tooth on the horizon of Pembrokeshire. 
its great black towers stretching to the sky, a stark but beautiful place, passed from owner to owner. For when the moon shines bright in the sky, on a still day, where you could, le you could feel a leaf fall from a tree, Princess Nest, the White Lady of Cari, can be seen wandering around the courtyard, her white flowing gown, her eyes as deep as oceans, but tears falling from her eyes. It is said that even in daylight, those who are at a crossroads in their life, or even those who need answers to questions, or those who have just been lucky, have stood in the castle and had the white lady wander past. She is seen many times. The light to the Barbary ape's darkness, Princess Nest of Behaibar, the white lady of Cario Castle. And that, my friends, is her tale. I thank you for joining me here at the Time Between Times once more. A few of you have asked me questions about relaxation, about well-being. I am no expert. I am merely telling you what helps me. But I have a few rules. One, phones. I do not look at my phone for 30 minutes after I get up. I do not look at it for 30 minutes before I go to bed. And I need to do better than this. But I try to have two days a week where I don't look at it at all. I use the time when I would be looking at social media to look at a book. To learn a story. To have a tale told to me from a time long ago. And that helps me. I'm not perfect, but I try. I want to thank you all so much for continuing to listen and watch these tales. As you know, I have a podcast now, Time Between Times podcast, which is going from strength to strength. The listeners there are in legions. And I'm beginning to think that maybe the videos should soon cease. However, I am at your disposal. Do you wish to see the videos continue? Or are you happy to join me at the Time Between Times podcast? Please let me know in the comments below. If you wish these to happen, they will. If you're happy to go to the podcast, then I am happy as well. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for all those who are supporting me on coffee or whatever. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is a place where I am given a stage to tell my tales in even the darkest of days. And this is a place where we can all join and listen. So join me next week when I will tell you another ghostly tale as Halloween approaches. And I will also put a little poll on Twitter this week. What type of tales would you like to see or hear after the ghostly time has passed? We shall see. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.